this video I'm going to talk about generic hollow points and you know some of the the testing that's been done by the companies and you know I'll discuss you know my own testing here and there but uh, I wanted to kind of compare these against some more you know premium ammunition and uh, see what now see if it's really worth going to premium ammunition and paying like two to three times more per round of for those than you know something like this. So, anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, pull up my computer and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're on my computer and we're going to be looking at Winchester's uh, site and uh, we're going to basically compare a few loading the popular ones nine millimeter. Uh, 40 and 45 and we'll do them one at a time. Unfortunately with 9mm we don't exactly have loadings that are consistent like on this one for instance, I'll just go down here, uh, the 147 grain actually does not even have a terminal ballistics chart so usually it would pop up right here. So we're gonna have to basically just deal with 115 grain unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> however the, what little I do know about the uh, 147 grain, uh, it the white box, this generic white box, was actually used. I don't know if it was in the Ranger setting because Ranger has its own version of the jacketed hull point, as you can see here. This is in the Ranger section. Ranger actually has a jacketed hull point section, as you can see here. It has its own full metal jacket setting, uh, environmentally friendly, frangible, bonded, T series, you know, whatever. There you have all these, right? Okay, so. Um, they have the regular jacket of hull point, which is basically the same construction as what you get out of the white box in here. So, first off, uh, we're going to cover that, and I'm going to go and use the Winchester line, and then I'm going to pull up some stuff from uh, uh, another a, a site that actually tests law enforcement ammunition and publishes it. It's called uh, LE.Vista Outdoors, and it's actually pretty dang sweet. So... You have all this different ammunition. Some actually have terminal ballistics charts, others don't. This is the duty ammunition for spear gold dots, their entire lineup for the most part. Except for the 155 grain uh, uh, in 40 caliber. And that's kind of odd because I have seen it around, but I haven't seen it here in quite a while. I believe they did have it, but uh, we also have the HSTs. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get back to that they, they don't have anything for the hydroshocks, the federals, um, the generic uh, federals, you know, like the old high shocks and stuff. They don't have anything uh, ballist, uh, terminal ballistics wise for any of the hydroshocks. Um, I would love to see them actually conduct these tests, but all you have is the HSTs. So, anyways, um, I'm going to be ranting about the HST in another video. <clears throat> But uh, today we're just going to concentrate on looking at generic ammunition and how it typically goes across the board. Unfortunately, the only comparisons that I'm going to be able to do is um, with uh, 40 and 45 uh, between the different manufacturers uh, for the generic ammunition. However, I think it's uh, good to touch on this 9mm ammo, this 115 grain 9mm ammo from Winchester. Now the Remington, from my testing, actually does a lot better in penetration and stuff like that. Weight retention expands a little less so it can actually penetrate deep, but we're going to go ahead and look at the 115 grain uh, jacketed hull point from the White Box and the Ranger series because they're basically the same. There's just a slight difference in uh, one of the different products because there's two different product codes. If we look here, the 115 grain is listed twice, but there's different product codes. You have 9mm JHP and 9 115 HP. So, um, that's a little bit different. Okay, so we'll start out with the white box, 115 grain. So, we go up here, and then we can see that all of this, all of these examples that I'm going to look at are out of 4 inch barrels, uh, for the most part, until we get to like the 45 where you're going to have like 5 inch barrels or whatever. So, anyways, let's go to the terminal ballistics chart. This is their results. Bear gelatin, 9 inches. And remember, 115s are screaming out pretty fast. These uh, generic hull points typically have pretty soft lead, so through heavy clothing, a little bit better. Still not meeting the 12 inch requirement for any of this. Basically, you got to turn it into a full metal jacket by putting it through plywood and steel. And then auto glass tears itself apart. So you can see 71 grains of retained weight. Uh, so then there's the percentages. So they did a pretty good job showing what the expansion was uh, for some of these things. So uh, not too bad. 
However, let's go ahead and cross over to the law enforcement uh, jacketed hull points. First one I want to look at is this bottom one. This one, uh, if we go back here actually uh, to the USA, the white box stuff, and the basic information, look at this velocity right here, 1225 feet per second. This matches up to the Ranger one, the bottom one. So with the product code of um, the RA Ranger Ammunition uh, 9mm JHP. So now we go to terminal ballistics and you can see it's virtually the same. 8 inches, 10 inches, um, you know, about 12.8 plywood, you know, 16, 13 and a half, and 8 inches again. So again, the retained weight, very similar. So we go back here to the terminal ballistics again and then we'll just flop back and forth. So white box, Ranger, basically the same stuff, but just different tests. So they actually did the test, but you can see a little bit of a difference here. So yeah, and not too uh, not too great, but you know, I mean, it's out of a four inch barrel out of a one fifteen. So if you have soft lead being put in, you know, this area in this uh, projectile, these walls are going to collapse very easily, and that's why these things would probably do pretty good in a shorter barrel. Uh, that's the only reason I would see using them. However, you know, that's just one example, and un unfortunately, I don't have any, uh, there's no real examples of the 147 grain out there. So, <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and um, move on to 40 caliber. <clears throat> So again, the the regular USA, the white box stuff, 40 caliber, it only comes in 180 grains. Uh, so these are all tested out of 4 inch barrels again. So the velocity for this, if you can see this, is 1010. Now, um, 4 inch barrel, these are the results. Now if you saw my review of this uh, ammunition when I conducted a, a ballistics test I am so sorry my camera is flipping out having to look at a computer screen. But if you saw my video uh, doing a comparison uh, with the 6 hour Elite Performance uh, ammunition, you saw that it did almost better than the SIG ammunition. It stayed together a lot better, etc. This is the only ammunition that gets this good of results, especially through all these mediums. This is the only one where it falls short, really, and it doesn't meet that 12 inch requirement for the FBI. 4 inch barrel, I would say between 3.5 to like a SIG 2, 239 um, and a SIG 229, those two, between those two barrel links, those would be perfect probably for this ammunition. It has soft lead, flattens out pretty nicely, um, and it retains itself pretty darn well. Uh, it's the only one that seems to pass all the FBI specifications with relative ease. Um, this isn't that great, but it's not that bad either. Now, let me go ahead and go to the Ranger. It's got two different versions. It's got a 155 grain version and a 180 grain version. Now, remember, this was tested out of a 4 inch barrel. Again, it's basically the same round, but law enforcement sometimes likes lighter loads. So you can see that there's really not much difference here. Uh, the only difference is that the um, wallboard in the original USA stuff, you know, penetrated it penetrated a little deeper in there. So we go here; it's basically all the same. So maybe they got exactly the same results in everything, including expansion and stuff. Or um, you can see this one didn't even expand at all. <laughs> Uh, didn't even deform a little bit like they did with wallboard. It just full metal jacketed and got good, <laughs> got good penetration. But uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's a little fishy to me. But you know, whatever. I mean, I don't really see any difference in the retained weight for this stuff. But you know, whatever. Maybe they um, just didn't record all the results on purpose. I don't know what the reason would be, but it would just be speculation. So another thing to look at actually as with the um, the regular uh, jacketed hull point from the white box, 1010 on the velocities here, 1020. So is that enough to really matter? 
Maybe. Maybe not. Um, I, I don't really care about velocities too much, but, you know, some people do. Some people want any increase that they can get. But this is what you're looking at for the 40 caliber. Now, since, that, since this actually goes in line with uh, others, there are 180 grain offerings in a lot of premium ammunition. Um, there are 115 grains in the SIG line, but I wasn't able to really find the 115 grain uh, testing. And plus, I don't really necessarily trust SIG's uh, advertised um, results, but that's just me. So, I've got, uh, I'll start out with the T-Series here the beloved T-Series. We got a 165 and a 180. We're going to go with 180 to look at the results. See how much better this is than the generic hollow points. Hmm. This is the T-Series. Hmm. Okay. That's the regular hollow point, the cheap ass hollow point. And here's the white box. Law enforcement. And then the T series. Hmm. I'm pretty sure these are very expensive and hard to find. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to the bonded version of the T series. How about that? Ranger bonded, 165 again, and the 180. So, can it redeem itself? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Not bad, especially on auto glass. That's the toughest one, so I like uh, I like ones that can actually get more than, you know, 12, 13 inches. Uh, that's a pretty good result, but, you know, I mean, it seems like they all deformed and expanded or, or whatever, and it maintained its... Uh, retained its weight really well, but yeah, I mean, these results aren't really too bad, but kind of disappointed in this penetration right here. I would expect with everything else being the way it is, except for this and this, I would expect it to penetrate a little bit more, but yeah, can't always have what you want, but you can see the expansion on these is actually really good because um, if you look back here, the expansion is close, but it's not as much. It's very controlled on these generic jacketed hollow points. Very controlled expansion. So it, it's very limited on how much it can expand. These ones will expand a lot more, especially the Ranger T. Look at that. Like over three quarters of an inch if it does expand. And then this one, it's a little bit more controlled than the Ranger T because it's bonded. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. It kind of helps it penetrate a little bit more, prevents that aggressive expansion. Okay, so I think we've uh, shown this one good enough. Now, let's go ahead and go to Spear. Let's go see what Spear offers in the 180 grain. So, very popular load, also tested out of 4-inch barrels, and they have their own terminal ballistics, uh, their FBI test protocol that they tested their stuff through. Bear Gelatin. 12.19 inches, if you can see that right there. Heavy clothing, 13. Okay. It says 19.6, if you can read that. And then 12.75. Eh. 17 inches through plywood, 12.75. Not too bad, kind of on par with the uh, Ranger T series, I would say. Uh, not too bad. Now let's go ahead and look at what the HST offers. The best offering you can ever get is the HST. It's the best round on the market, right? Okay, we'll see about that. Okay, so, bare gelatin. 12 inches exactly. 12.5, looking kind of shallow. Steel, 11 inches. Hmm. Wallboard, 12 inches. Hmm. Plywood, 13 inches. Hmm. 14 inches through auto glass. That's pretty nice, but uh, I would prefer more penetration. After, you know, if I have to go through barriers, I would like to, to, to see that it's not barely making it. Um, bare minimum never really gets you anywhere in the world. No, that kind of sticks you in the class of mediocrity, and I don't really care for that. So anyways, 
Um, let's go ahead and go back to the regular Winchester um, and look at the, let's go ahead and reset everything. So we are back to start over and we'll go into the 45. So go ahead and look at the 230 grain 45 caliber. So here we go and their terminal ballistics chart. 11 inches, 13 inches, 15 inches, 18 inches, 12 inches, 11.4. And this is being fired out of a 5 inch barrel, 880 feet per second. Bad? Eh, I don't know if I would say it's bad, but here's the ballistics on that. So now let's go ahead and go to the Ranger uh, version. And there is no 45 caliber offering in the Ranger. Uh, as far as the basic jacketed hull point. However, let's go ahead and look at the beloved T-Series. There's a 230 plus P, and we'll just stick with the standard pressure. So, for the standard pressure, 935 feet per second, also out of a 5-inch barrel. So we'll go to terminal ballistics. Whoa. The only real good performance is out of auto glass uh, as far as uh, redeeming itself above the 12 inches because these are the ones you're going to typically see or these two. These ones, it's just extra credit if it goes further than, you know, at least 13 inches or whatever. But, yeah, that is very important just as these two are, at least for me. So it retained its weight really well. Um, this one retained its weight really well too, except through auto glass. 77% uh, left, and this one had 99%. Kind of interesting. Not bad. But I, I don't know what would cause it to be so shallow even out of this one. Maybe it's because it expanded so damn much. Look at that. An inch. An inch. Over three quarters of an inch. And there just didn't expand at all, and it got 21 inches. So not bad. That's, this velocity that it, it's, been, it's getting right here is like plus P. For most rounds. So now let's go ahead and go to the bonded one, which basically just has, you know, the standard pressure, which is good in my opinion. So here, 935 again, 5 inch barrel. It says superior penetration, ideal for auto glass and abrasive barriers. So <clears throat> that's what they're advertising. Hmm. So let's go back to this one. Those results and the bonded results. Not much difference on the bonded results if you look at the auto glass. It's only half an inch more. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, not much difference there. It's just making it over the 12 inch mark for the bonded um, ammo. So, hmm. Is it really worth it? Or would you rather go with something that's non-bonded, less expensive, but gets very similar results? I don't know. This at least gets 13 inches in heavy clothing, where this one doesn't. I mean, it has good weight retention through auto glass, but, you know, I don't really... I, I'm not really fighting in the world of Transformers too much, but if I have to shoot through a windshield, I'm probably going to fire several rounds, so... Yeah, it should be okay-ish. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about... I don't know about all that, but, you know, auto glass isn't really that great on the regular hull points, but, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. It, there are options out there. <laughs> okay, so, now let's go ahead and move on to Spear, as we had done before. So, we'll go down this line, find the 230 grain standard pressure jacketed hull point. These are not too hard to find. They're actually a pretty good deal. So, again, this one is actually tested out of a 5-inch barrel, as with, you know, all the other ones. This one is 890 feet per second. So, let's go ahead and go down here. And, first off, we'll look at the bear gel. Bear gel, 13 inches. Heavy clothing, 13.6. 19.5. 16.8. 21.95. And 13.1. Well, that's pretty damn good, if I may say so myself. All right, so that's that 
for the um, the gold dots. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the HST. So we'll go to the standard pressure 230 grain. And you know what? For a kicker, I'll just go ahead and do the plus P afterwards, just to just to see. So, anyways, bear gel. 12 inches. Heavy clothing. 13.5. Okay. 17.5. 12 inches. Hmm. 12 inches. 10 and a half. Hmm. Out of a 5 inch barrel. Going 890 feet per second. Okay. Now, let's go back here. Let's go to the plus B. Let's have fun with this, shall we? So, first one, bear gel. 12.5. 13. 17.5. 13. 13. 10 and a half. Hmm. See, some of these uh, rounds are considered to be the most advanced and the best on the market. However, when push comes to shove in a lot of these, at least the main calibers, not including like 38 Special, 357 SIG is awful in generic hull points, especially the Winchester with how um, how soft the lead is. Um, most of the time, you're better off just getting a generic hollow point. However, like the 9mm 115, it's going too dang fast. I would be interested to see them actually complete the 147s, the way you could cross over and, and look at them but Winchester doesn't even have it in their regular Ranger jacket hollow point section. So anyways, <clears throat> that's that's what you can find on the internet. And again, if I'm going to be doing a 115 grain jacketed hollow point for a 9mm, uh, I'm probably going to be doing the regular Remington green and white box. Uh, for my testing, it works just as well as a lot of the other premium ammunitions do. And good expansion, good penetration, reliable, and uh, works through a variety of barrelings.